sequential access storage. Now we're talking about the actual storage devices. And in storage devices, we have, we have two major types of storage devices. One has advantages over the other. And <clears throat> the two main ones are either a sequential access device, which you must read. If you want to read any piece of information in that device, you must start at the, at the beginning and start reading until you reach it. You can only reach it sequentially. You cannot jump straight at the point where the data is. And the other one is known as the direct access storage device. That means you can go directly to any location in the storage device. Um, and examples of those are the tapes and the hard disks. The tape recorders came out back in the 50s and 60s and even earlier. And then computer technology started using them to store data. And they started storing data on magnetic tapes. And hence they started, and they've been using them ever since then. So ever th since the start almost of computer technology, they're still using computer tapes. And guess what? They're still the biggest source or the biggest form of storage today is still tapes. So you know they've been around for a long time. And the main reason for them being still around is that they're the cheapest form of storage. You can, in ratio between the quantity of data they store and how much you pay for it for storage, tapes work out uh, absolutely cheap compared to hard disks and other forms so far. So, so basically, magnetic tapes, they, they, they're used for secondary storage. So obviously, when we say secondary, anything other than main memory. Main memory is, is the primary storage. Anything else is known as secondary storage. And it was used in early computer systems and still being used today on archiving and, and backup operations and things like that. Basically, you back up the, on a tape. They're relatively slow, but they hold huge amounts of data. They can carry loads of data. Uh, records on a magnetic tape are stored serially. So basically, you have a, a reel, a tape reel, and it goes around at maybe another reel there. So just looking horizontally at the tape here, uh, just it's, it's a plastic material impregnated with some magnetized material. And as, as one to read or write onto it, the, it passes under the head that generates a magnetic field to represent one and zeros, and information is written onto the tape. The problem with it, you must read it in sequence. Like if you want to read a record at the end of this reel here, that will probably take you 10 minutes to reach it or even longer. That's not very good for interactive systems. If, and then if after you pass a record, you can then go back again. Rewinding is very difficult. So what you do, you do real speed rewind. And these tapes need to be installed or mounted manually. Where somebody has to come up, pick it up, and stick it there, and feed it in under the head and all that. So they're not really the handiest thing. And they almost always require manual or human intervention. So that's really the, ba the basic info idea about them. Generally, in magnetic medium, tapes or hard disks, they usually they store data by putting a magnetic charge onto the tape. Or the hard disks, same thing goes for hard disks. This, magneti this magnetic charge kind of gets weaker and weaker as time goes by. And eventually, it gets too weak to be recognized. And I think that the, maybe the time limit is around 10, 15 years, maybe slightly you know, plus or minus a few years. So generally, first the quality gets bad, and then eventually it gets too bad. You see, I don't know. It's the same with, with, with old videos that are magnetically recorded. After a certain number of years, the magnetic charge on those videos kind of gets weaker. Um, so th but this is a problem for all magnetic using materials. Um, disadvantages, access time variability. That's a big variability in access time. The variance is, a, is kind of can be a problem here. Like if you want to look for a record, if your record happens to be at the start of the tape, you'll get it very quickly. If it's at the end of the tape, there's a big difference between. So you have to rush through all the records until you get to the end. 
So um, that, is, that is a problem that hopefully we, we have less of it on direct access devices. So direct access devices is any device that you can directly access any point of it all the time. And a good example of that, obviously, is the hard disk that we use. So instead of having to sequentially follow a tape until you reach the end of it, now what we do is, is a hard disk and information is stored on tracks, so it could be on any tracks anywhere, and it's rotating all the time, and you have a head that moves over the surface of the rotating disk, and any circle or any track, you bring the head over it, then you can read any data on that. So just by moving the head to either location, you can cover any track you want, and you could almost access any record at a lot less variance than that used on the tapes or found on tapes. So this can work in within you know, thousands of a second difference, maybe. It depends on where is the head. If the head was here at this point, and the record happens to be here, it'll be much faster. But if the head has to move there, there'll be a thousand of a record of a second difference or even less than that. Okay, so that's, that's what variance we talk about. So, so, but it's, it's so fast that it's so good and suitable for interactive um, applications. So, direct access devices in general, that's basically where you can access any part of the storage device. We, they can be divided into, there's a variety of them. There's magnetic disks. These are the, what they used to be, the floppy ones and the hard disks. So there's, the floppy ones have, decide, have disappeared. Then we have the optical disks. These are ones that use laser or light to, to store the information onto them. These are the, the likes of the CDs and DVDs and those disks that use laser to burn the information on. Flash memory, they are like electronic small circuitry, just like switches. You switch them on or off and they stay in that position and they, they store that information. They see the USB ports and uh, the USB flash disks. And the magneto-optical disks, they're similar to the CD disks, but they use combination of magnets and light or laser, uh, not the magneto in the cartoon. <laughs> so um, we talk about hard disks, um, and there, there are two types. To start with, there's the fixed head and the variable head, or the moving head, movable head. So, j just let's just find out what, what a hard disk might look like. So a hard disk is just a disk, flat disk, metallic disk that has material that also can be magnetized. And what we, then we have a head that kind of floats over it, and this, this disk here rotates, and at any point the head is floating on top of this here, it covers basically a circle, and each one of these circles is called a track. And the data is written on those tracks, so we end up writing ones and zeros on those circles. And then another circle is, is used. And there are, there are a number of concentric circles. I mean, circles, they're not touching one another. They, and they share the center. So data is written on, on those, it's like lines on a page. And it depends where the head is. The head can move, and these tracks are numbered from zero on the outside to the maximum number on the inside, and that the maximum number depends on the type of head and the type of hard disk. Let's say 800 tracks or something like that. We can have maybe 800 tracks. So the head can move in this range, and it can cover from the first track to the last track, wherever it happens to be. And the head is, is rotated by what's known as a stepper motor. So a stepper motor, you can control how far you want it to go and where to stop. Not just an, the ordinary electric motor where you switch it on and then when you switch it off, it's still moving, stops slowly. 
No, it stops at certain points. So you can actually move it to stop at the next track. And how accurate the motor is, you can have more, more circles or more stops, more definite stops. So it stops definitely on top of one of those tracks and it can read the information or write the information onto it. Now, what we also do is we have another one on the other side, on the other surface, and we could have two heads. So one head on top of the disk and one underneath it. And what we could end up is having, like that disk with, with one head on top of it and another one underneath it, similar to it. And then we can have another disk underneath it on the same entire bag and we can have two or four or three or more disks on, on the same hard disk. And we can read or write information on either side of, of each of those. Usually a lot of them, not the top one and the bottom one they don't use, but a lot of them they do use it. So that's the way hard disks operate. So they, they are formatted usually on both sides into concentric circles. So that's where we, we write our tracks. And the data is recorded serially on each track. So every track then the information is written directly. And now, so the divisions the hard disk has is these tracks. And then each track is divided into smaller sections. And we call them sectors. So each track is, and the they're all lined up. They line up together. So here's a sector, here's a sector. And we, they're also called blocks. And that's whenever you want to read from a hard disk or write from a hard disk, you use that block. That's the unit where you can communicate with the hard disk. You either write a block or read a block. If you say, here's a character, write a character. No, we write a block. So if you say, I have a small file, has two words in it, give me a space on the disk. They don't give you two space, they give you a block. A block is allocated. And then you start filling it right in the information here. And if, if it goes a little bit more than a block, then you need another block. Depends on the filing system, it, you could be given another block here. And all blocks on the hard disk, they hold the same size. Whether it's this on the inside track that looks very short, very small, or this on the outside that's much bigger. They carry the same amount of information. They store the same amount of information. It's slightly more compressed here and slightly more spaced out there. That's why on hard disks, most hard disks, you can actually put more information if you use a different arrangement. But this is the way all hard disks are designed. All blocks, all sectors here are kind of marked this way. And you store the same amount of information on the outside track, the same amount of information on the inside track. So it will be a lot more compressed on the inside track. So applications. Now, anytime you want to read information, you have to move the head to, to sit on top of the correct track. Now, the reading bit. Now, there, there's two or three length of times that we, we, we consider until the data is read. So generally, if this is, again, a hard disk, and you have data either on this track or on this track, let's say your data is somewhere here. Your file that you want to read is there on the inside track, and you're sitting on track zero. So first thing that takes a bit of time when reading is you have to move the head down that way, from here to there, and that takes whatever length of time it takes. Very short time, but still, that's, let's say it takes few, a thousandth of a second just to move from there to there. Then, just when you get there, remember this is rotating. And hard disks rotate at around 7,200 RPMs. So they rotate pretty fast, extremely fast. So, just as you got there, this piece of information, this file is moved to that location. So now you have your head here. So you just missed the file. So you have to wait for the file to make a full rotation to come under the head. And only when it goes under the head, then you can pick that information and read it. So that, too, is another piece of time that's wasted. So we have mainly two, pieces, two periods of time, moving the head to the correct track and then waiting for that file to rotate. It, you could be lucky, it could be just here, the file, 
when the head got there, it moves right immediately after it, underneath the head, or it could be just missed it and go around. It'll come around pretty quick. Like, it probably rotates, makes maybe four or five revs per second. So it, it'll take a quarter of a second or even less to, for, for this to, to make one for revolution. So once it's under the head, then we start picking the information. It's magnetically, my electromagnetic field generates a magnetic char an electric charge that in memory we translate it into ones and zeros. And it's written into main memory. So that's the transfer bit. So there are those three steps. This transfer is the fastest of them all. But moving the head, it's a mecha mechanical device. No matter how fast it is, it's, it's still going to be considered slow. So instead of this moving, there are some, some hard disks that what they do, they have lots of tracks here. On every track, they have a head, a pickup, read, recording head sitting. It's not, it's not moving. So they have them in, in a way that they're always sitting there on the track. So all you have to do is say, all right, I'm going to use head number 18. And it will pick the information. It doesn't have to move. So you've automatically saved about half the time, if not more, that moving the head that way is the short, is the length, longest piece of time that gets wasted, even though it's a very short piece of time. But there are some applications that you know, they could do away with that. With, with that. And they become extremely fast machines. And these, they are used generally on spaceships and some other applications that, that can't do with any delay. So it's, it's the direct access storage device. And it's actually called, remember, direct because you can go anywhere, any location in the hard disk within reasonable time. There's very little difference between accessing any bit of information. And within a thousand or a couple of thousands of seconds, you can locate any piece of information on the hard disk. Now, I've already mentioned those. When you access the hard disk, when you want to read information or write information to the hard disk, this is what you come across. We, we call it access time. And access time actually co consists of those three times for the um, movable head hard disks. With the fixed head, you save this bit. There's no, there's no seek time because the head is already there over the track. It's fixed. But with the movable head, you don't know where. If you want to read from one of those lines, you must first move. That movement there takes that bit of time, and that's, that's called seek time. So it's the time to position the read or write head onto the correct track. And it's the slowest of those three parts here. It takes the longest time even though you can imagine it happens so fast, but it's still, it's the slowest. And it doesn't apply to devices that have the fixed head. While the search head, the search time is also called the rotation time. So that's, once you put the head on top of the correct head, the, the track, now you want to read a file somewhere, you have to wait there for that sector to go underneath the head. And once you got that, then the rest of it is the transfer time. And the transfer time is just the length of time it takes for the information to that magnetic charge to be sensed by the head and translated into an electric signal to be placed in memory. So that's called the transfer time, and that's the shortest time of those three. So this is another way of reading what is access time. And access time is seek time plus search time, plus transfer time, or rotation time, whichever one you want to call. Some books call it rotation time. Some other books call it transfer time. Whatever you call it, transfer or rotation will be accepted. Give me one advantage of tapes over hard disks as a storage medium. It can store a lot, a lot more data compared to cost. Yeah, it, a lot of data and very cheap, cheaply. OK. What are the advantages of a hard disk over a tape? They can store a lot more data. Hard disks. Yeah, the actual disk, not the tape. What's the advantage of a disk over a tape? Say again? 
directly. Yeah, so it's a direct access device. It can access any piece of information anywhere on the hard disk reasonably fast. The tape cannot. It can access the first record fast, but then the last record can take a long time. It has to go sequentially until it reaches that last record. Right, okay. Well, what's the, what's the disadvantages of magnetic? kind of devices, tapes and hard disks, compared to laser ones or optical ones? Say again? No, hard disks are. Hard disks are good. Tapes are not, but I want something that both of them, a disadvantage of all these things that use magnets rather than the ones that use light or laser. Say again? Okay. When optical, you can also delete opticals nowadays. Like originally, they started as read only, but now you, you can actually, okay, with the newer rewritable CDs, you can rewrite data as well. The older ones write once only. You can't, you can't rewrite it, which is, in a way, it's good. Any other disadvantage or advantage? Time degradation of the magnetic field. Time degradation of the magnetic field. Lasers, CDs and DVDs, but theoretically, they say they never degrade. They never, you know, once you burn it, it's all, it's burnt. In. But they actually degrade in a different way. They, the, the metals within them, they kind of, I don't know, it corrode or something, but, but theoretically they're supposed to last for a longer time. No, well, if you scratch anything, it'll go bad. So, uh, you know, supposing you put it in, a, in its box in a, in a safe and lock it away, how long will it last? That's what we are talking about. But yeah, if you, of course, if you, well, maybe, okay, it's, it's hard disks are a bit more solid, but they're also prone to break. You never know when that hard disk that you have that rotates at 7,000 RPMs, just, if you just click and something, you hear a little click and that's the end of it. So then there's no signals or signs beforehand that tell you it's going to stop. So the advice is always back up, always back up, especially if you have an assignment or a project. Right. 